Hello there. My name is Miriam Spellman, and I've been friends with your teacher, Mrs. Cruz, since she was a baby. Her mother, Sally Blackwood, and I have been friends since before Mrs. Cruz was born. And I'm going to be reading you today a story by one of my most favorite authors, Patricia Polacco. And this story is entitled, A Palomando's Dream. So what I'll do is I'll read the story and then I'll show you the pictures. Patricia Polacco wrote the story and she drew these amazing pictures. And for many years she lived in Oakland, California, which is very near Santa Rosa. I didn't know that. Now she lives, I think, in Michigan. Okay, so let's begin. Once there was a very drab village, so drab in fact that the road leading to it was overgrown from lack of visitors and interest. There wasn't much to do there, especially for a little boy named Apelamondo, a boy who loved to dream. For him, dreams were magic chariots pulled through his mind by galloping hues of color. For him, dreaming was a way of life. He dreamt so much of the time that the villagers began to talk. There goes that slow Apelamondo they called after him. He'll never amount to much. He'll never, he never does anything useful. He dreams the day away. Apelomondo, Apelomondo had four good and true friends. Don't listen to them, Jeff Cho Fury said quietly. What do they know? Lark Apost... I think it's pronounced Apostanov. Apostanov snapped. Petra and Dorma Opatoshu cooed. Besides, they don't know our secret, do they? It was certainly true. These five shared a very special secret indeed. Apelomondo's dreams. You see, whenever he daydreamed with his friends, they could actually see the dreams. Right out of the top of his head, they drifted. They twisted through shafts of brilliant sunlight, floated up, up, up into the sunny sky. There was so much to look at, animals, birds, flowers, all in wondrous, vibrant colors. Pelamondo enjoyed dreaming just for them. He did big dreams, he did tall dreams, he did little dreams, he did middle dreams. One day Lark announced, let's capture one of Apelamondo's dreams on a piece of paper. Then we could look at it even when a Palomando isn't around. The children tried and tried to get the dreams to stay, but each time the dreams drifted off and disappeared. Then Petra and Dorma covered a piece of paper with water from the well tub they had been playing in. At that very instant, a dream floated up from El Palomando's head, and Lark and Jephto pushed the paper in front of it. It held fast. Hooray, they exclaimed for joy. Now we can keep his dreams forever. It wasn't long before they discovered that Apelomondo's dreams 
would stay on anything that was moist or damp. Mops drying over balcony rails, laundry airing on clotheslines, bottoms of fat white ducks waddling up the street. Boy, a Pelamondo Jeff Toe laughed. You better not ever dream on a rainy day. What a mess we'd have, Lark snickered. Lucky you only dream on sunny days. Then, one day when Apello Mundo had begun to dream, the sun suddenly hid behind gray storm clouds. The wind blustered and rain dropped from the skies above them. Oh no, Lark squealed. What are we going to do? Apello Mundo, don't dream anymore, Jephto ordered. You just can't, Petra and Dorma said as they were pelted with wet raindrops. Lark clapped Apelamondo's hat tight onto his head, but it was no use. The dream had already drifted up and was floating toward the buildings of the town. The children gasped as they watched each and every scene hold fast on the walls and storefronts of the town. As soon as the rain stopped, the townsfolk came out of their houses and shops. They were stunned when they saw all of the Palomando's dreams on the walls. Someone has painted our houses in stores, a voice called out. Who did this? An angry woman cried. I'll find who is responsible for this prank the mayor said as he saw the crowd that had gathered. Then his eyes fell on the children. They were covered with Apelamondo's dreams. You, the mayor shouted as he started toward them. What have you children done? The children were taken to the elders of the village. Do you mean to tell us that all of those things on our walls are dreams? They asked when the children explained. The more the children tried to tell the villagers about Apelamondo's wonderful dreams, the more suspicious the elders became. If what you say is true, let's see Apelamondo dream right now, here in this place, the mayor snapped. The elders leaned forward in their seats and watched Pelamondo. But the harder Pelamondo tried to dream, the more impossible it became. Nothing at all would come into his mind. Jephto, Lark, Petra, and Dorma all stared at the air about, above Pelamondo's head, waiting, waiting, but nothing appeared. I knew they were lying, a villager whispered. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Such a ridiculous story, one elder said out loud. Let them scrub the walls, a voice rang out. Fit punishment for painting our village without our permission. As the children walked toward home after the ordeal, they were afraid that Apelamondo's wonderful dreams would never happen again. They walked and worried. In their sadness, they didn't watch the path. When they looked up, they were in the middle of the forest. They had lost their way. As hours passed, the children's family became more and more alarmed. They alerted all the people in the village who, went out, who sent out search parties to look for the children. Where could they be, they all pondered. Our people will never find us here, Petra and Dorma cried. They won't even know where to look, Jephto said sadly. If only we could signal them somehow, Lark said thoughtfully. Then all of the children looked at 
a Pelamondo. You can help a Pelamondo, Lark announced. If you dream a dream big and bright enough, it will rise above the trees. People in the village will see it and know we are here. Yay, they all cheered. But a Pelamondo was quiet. I can't dream anymore, he cried. You have to try, they all said. You must. All a Pelamondo could think of were the bitter words of the elders, the people who didn't believe him. And try as he might, nothing would appear in his mind. There was no dream. Then he looked into the eyes of his friends. In Lark's eyes, there was certainty. In Jephto's, steady sureness. In Petra's and Dorma's, complete expectation. For they loved his dreams. Then he closed his eyes and began to see. Bright colors of every hue, shape, and texture floated from the top of a Pelamondo's head. They twisted through the air. The wind caught them and shifted them above the trees. Sure enough, the villagers saw the dream just above the forest where the children were. They all followed this vision, and when they found the children, they wept for joy. Never again would they question the importance of dreams. Now the village is no longer a drab place. The path leading to it is bustling with visitors drawn there by rich colors and soaring images that cover the walls of the town. Colorful scenes that its town folk are very proud of indeed. It's a dreamy place, a wonderful place. An old man sits by the fountain in the square, an old man who loves to dream. For him, Dreams are magic chariots pulled through his mind by galloping hues of color. For him, dreaming is a way of life. I'll see you again. I'll read some other stories by Patricia Polacco. Okay, see you later.